Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Cassie, marketing specialist from GenStrip, and we are the world's leading biotech company with gene synthesis, protein, antibody, and preclinical drug development service capabilities. So, GenScript ProBio is the biopharmaceutical CDMO segment of GenScript, and GenScript ProBio has established the integrated innovative biologic CDMO platforms covering two major service areas, such as the therapeutic antibody drug and genes and cell therapy. So in this webinar today, we are going to discuss about lentivirus vector manufacturing using suspension cell line. So let me introduce you our presenter today, Dr. Mamu Ali, who is the project manager of virus purification process in GenScript ProBio. So Dr. Mamu Ali is a sought after gene therapy expert. After getting his MD in imaging and molecular biology from China and CME from genetics from the States, he entered the gene and cell therapy industry to explore his passion for eliminating genetic diseases. He has completed a number of lentivirus and AAV production batches and has deep understanding and experience in the production process. This webinar will take around 35 minutes and it will be a recorded session. You can type in your questions in the chat box and we'll answer them after the presentation. If you didn't get to answer your questions during the Q&A session, we'll be sure to take down and I will email back to you. So without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Ali to start his presentation. Dr. Ali, over to you right now. <clears throat> yes, good morning, everyone. <laughs> this is Dr. Ali here at Genscript. And on behalf of everyone at Genscript, I would like to thank you for taking time from your busy schedule to attend our webinar on lentivirus vector manufacturing using suspension cell line. And um, before our presentation, I would like to check, like, I hope you guys can see the presentation on your screen. And um, if you have any questions, you are welcome and encouraged to ask us. Um, you will be able to see a box on your bottom right of the screen. And if you have any technical issues, the Q&A box can be used. At the end of the pre presentation, we hope to have Q&A session, and we will try to um, answer as many questions um, as possible. However, if you guys have any questions um, left unanswered, please write or connect, and we will definitely get back to you as soon as possible. All right, let's um, begin. So lentivirus vector manufacturing using suspension cell line. All right, so here is the content for today, the viral vector in gene and cell therapy. Um, the starting materials like plasmids used for lentiviral vector packaging and the lentiviral vector with the adherent manufacturing and then the suspension manufacturing. And last but not least, would like to talk about Genescript ProBio track record. Um, here, over the last few years, gene therapy has emerged as a promising medical tool to um, treat different kinds of uh, diseases. This novel approach is underpinned by the positive clinical results um, achieved in patients uh, followed by regulatory authorities approval in vivo products commercialized in both US, um, Europe, and in China. Um, recently, a few companies, for example, like Bluebird, um, Kite Pharma, GlaxoSmith, Unicor, um, has been approved by the US uh, uh, FDA um, relatively in 2017 uh, and uh, so on, and also by the European Medical Agency. These milestones have been considered as breakthrough in the medical field and have encouraged pharmaceutical companies to actually increase investments in gene therapy products and developments. In 2018, FDA, uh, FDA have actually received 206 gene therapy related IND submissions. Um, here, um, I'd like to talk about the market perspective. Lentivirus have gained value over recent years as generic careers in gene therapy. 
these viral vectors are safer than what was previously being used for gene therapy. These characteristics of the lentivirus is ideal for clinical research um, and has been demonstrated with the approval of lentivirus-based gene therapy. Um, and this um, characterization of the LVV have gained a significant improvement from the recent years. A large, um, actually, number of functional lentivirus particles are required for clinical trials. As we can see here um, in the chart, um, you can see in the chart about the uh, 2018 um, and in 2021, um, the gene therapy related was 49% and cell therapy was over 40%. So overall, 40% of the cell therapy programs in clinical phases, large amount of LVV is required in the future for clinical phases, as they are targeting solid tumors and other kinds of cancers. So this is a very exciting news. And even in the clinical phase, you can see 43%, and here is the 57%. And whereas in the R&D phases, it's 56% and there are 45% for the blood tumor diseases. All right, here are, um, I would like to talk about a few challenges in the process development of a viral um, vector. And here, GeneScript have actually a one-stop solution for plasmids to lentivirus vector to solve our industrial bottlenecks. Here you can see that there are a few things I would like to mention about is the, the temperature sensitivity, the acid base, the salt sensitiveness, the low tolerance of shear force, which is actually the biggest bottleneck, the most important factor to actually consider. And then we have also a few issues like uh, large-scale transfection using different transfection reagents and to control the tighter ratio and the loss of um, strial filtration due to the different sizes. Therefore, the first of being focused on solving these um, mentioned drawbacks, which is associated with the production and purification of uh, lentivirus under good manufacturing practices. Um, in, uh, actually, in recent years, we have seen the, uh, the development and optimization of new protocols, packaging cell lines, different culture mediums, which is very important to actually optimize. Here now I would like to mention about our plasmids for lentiviral vector manufacturing. The good news about it is, is like we have been um, registered with the FDA, CBER, we have the, the number, the reference as well, which will be immediately available to support cell and gene therapy products. Um, the readiness for the BLA by, uh, by will be um, 2021. And here I would like, we have a screenshot we have mentioned over here for the, uh, the acknowledgement. And I um, would also like to talk about the, uh, the advantages of our Lenti helper plasmids. We use the third generation, which is idle for many different things. Um, for example, like reducing the time and cost by using the, the three helper plasmids, which is simplified regulatory documents as well, so it's easier to access, and completely and immediately available for preclinical and clinical manufacturing. And it comes with a very clear history and the most important thing is all the three plasmids comes without any IP issues. So that's also one of the most important um, feature of our plasmids. 
So now I'd like to um, talk about a little bit about the adherent uh, manufacturing. Um, give you um, a short um, introduction about it. Here is the the map, the flow chart, how it's done, the cell thawing, the cell expansion, the cell factory, then transfection, then harvest, clarification using different filters, then TFF, then the nucleus treatment, then we'd go for a different chromatography, then stral filtration and TFDF, and then fill and finish. And here, the most important thing, the, the characteristics of the QC testing, which you can see here on the right side, <clears throat> it's this assurance that each batch meets, you have to be more specific with the purity, the potency, the safety, and identity. Um, therefore, the QC testing should be precise and accurate to provide the uh, clinical investigation team and the regulatory team to understand how it works. One of the challenges of the characterize of the QC testing is the viral vector is a high degree of complexity as it's a class of biologics, which I have marked here in the, in the yellow, which are very important CQAs. Um, we use different kinds of tools which are very crucial in process development. And it plays a very, very important role in the downstream process. And furthermore, the development of the faster, more accurate um, tools, like the assays, which you can see in the thing, is, is needed. And it's time consuming. Um, and especially, we usually go for qPCR, which is usually the method of choice, um, droplet digital, DDPCR has been recently used for quantifying viral genome. And ELISA is also widely used in techniques for viral antigens. And here you can see, uh, the, I've highlighted four more important things, the BCA, which are going for the adherent um, part. The BCAs are needs to be removed when it comes to adherent service. And the method we use is the ELISA. And the impurities, the HCP or SCD, it's by uh, the, uh, the SCP will be for the ELISA and with DNA with the RT-PCR. And the functional titer with the FACS, that's um, where we do our testing as. Um, now coming to the suspension part, a lot of people do have <clears throat> um, questions about what are the basic uh, differences between suspension system and uh, adherent system. We do get a lot of questions and um, we always try to answer, but here I have um, you know, classified into, into two different groups. Um, especially with, when it comes to the suspension system, here we use um, inline system, and we do also use the commercial cell lines as well, which comes with a very high license fees. So we kind of use our in-house built system, um, especially with uh, HEC 293 or 293T. At the other hand, when at adherent, we use 293T cell. And <clears throat> With the uh, suspension system, we use bioreactor, which is serum-free. And in adherent system, you have to use the BCA. The, the serum is there, and it requires to be removed. And with the suspension cell line, you get a very high titer in the supernatant, which is a very positive sign. And uh, in the adherent system, you get lower titer in the, in the supernatant. And the high batch yield in, in the suspension and lower in the adherent. And no residual BSA. So it's a suspension free. So, of course, there is no um, BCA impurities. So you don't have to do an extra removal step to take it out. But it comes with the higher SCP content in the supernatant. But in the adherent, there will be very low 
SCP content in the supernatant. When it comes to purification, there are a few different steps, like especially for clarification, you use different techniques, but um, it's some kind of some what's similar to the suspension system. So TFDF and then chromatography. And I also would like to say a few more things about it is like the adherent system is laborious. It requires um, a lot of uh, space. It takes time. So it's much, much feasible to go for the suspension system. So um, as I've mentioned that we have our in-house uh, cell line. So it's power S, which is trademarked. Um, is 293 cell. So here in the chart on the left-hand side, you can see the crude titer fax TU per ml that the power S 293T, which is GenScript in-house cell line, have a higher titer compared to the commercial cell lines. And on the right-hand side, we have did a few experiments with gene of interest um, GOE 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And you can see that it's almost the same with a higher crude titer, which is 10 to the power 7, 10 to the power 8. So to conclude, I'll say it's, it's better or similar performance of our power cell 293 cell line compared to the top vendors, which is available in the market. We do get higher titers, and it's consistent and stable yield when we compare it with different GOI. This is the very important part when it comes to consistent and stability. Here, I would like to talk about the scalability and the, the process. We have used um, different projects and we compare it different using um, the facts for our thing. So in project one, you can see when we have used two liters to 10 liters. We have used numbers of batches and here you can see it's consistent and the crude titer, it's, it's, the results are really, really great. And you can see the comparison between the project one and project two. So it's almost um, stable. And with, um, with on the right hand side, you can see number of, of batches of three for project three and number four for, for project four. So it's almost um, consistent. Okay, the, the third highlight is about the high T transduction efficiency, which we have compared it with a um, few other vendors in the market, vendor A, B, and uh, with GenScript Pro Bio, which is Power S293 cell. So it's almost 20% plus, so that's high performance in T cell transduction comparable with adherent process. Here with customer B, we have GOI1 and GOI2. And the CAR-T percentage is over 60%. And in the GOI2, it's over 40%. And the highlight four is the, is the superior yield and the cost. Here with the tire improvement, we have received 40-fold increase when it comes to suspension culture. So here on the right-hand side of the chart, you can see the adherent and the suspension. The, um, the chart, you can see that it decreases 50 to 60%. The cost reduction is 60% when we operate on suspension culture compared to adherent. And um, here you can see the yield increases too. Like with the 10 liter batch, it increased four times. When we have run the batch in 50 liters, it was increased five times. So undoubtedly when suspension process is 
much, much better compared to your heron when it comes to higher yield and the price reduction. So drastically dropping 50 to 60%. Okay, so I'd like to talk about the, the key points in the, the process development of lentivirus manufacturing with the suspension culture. Here, when you actually consider about um, the process development, you have to consider a few things. For example, we have to see which cell lines are you gonna use um, whether you want to use it for the inherent culture or you want to go with suspension culture, what will be the, um, the ratio for the transfection? You want to use a, a stable cell line or which cell line you want it to use. And when it comes to requirements specifically for the raw material and other products or regulatory, and quality when it comes to different materials. Um, which is very, very important. You actually need to know what kind of material we can use to get the optimized result when it comes to um, filters, when it comes to resins, when it comes to the, um, the fiber for UFDF or TFF. So these are a very important points you need to consider. The crucial parameters, I would say, and then for the scaling up and how it's going to be transferred, how will be the titer, and what will be the cell density, on, and how are you going to control your turbidity, and how are you going to um, reduce your impurities, and what plan do you have when it comes to strial filtration? you're going to lose a lot of virus in that process. So uh, here, um, the upstream process for our um, cell line. Here I have a few things like the cell line, the packaging system, the serum film medium with VCD and VIA. Um, VIA. Um, I'll start with the cell harvest actually is the interface between upstream and downstream. The time of harvest um, should be determined to take into consideration different parameters like quality, the product quality, not only productivity, the product stability, for example, like what's the cell density and what's the cell viability, and also the enormous impact um, for the later on steps, like purification steps. Um, the higher increase in host cell protein, the host cell DNA, and the cell debris. For example, that will be a burden for the downstream process for the purification. However, there is no actually no idle time for time of harvest, and you need to adjust the parameters and you have to take that in account when you are doing the development as manufacturing. And for example, here to wind up, it's like four things, the cell density at the transfection, um, which transfection reagent is gonna be used, what will be the plasmid ratio, the ratio between transfection reagent and total DNA. So you have to optimize all these processes all these parameters to get an idle answer. So this is the, um, the case study which we are talking. So here is um, the, the, um, the two graphs. As in the graph, you can see the stability of our process in which different projects were involved and the facts has followed the similar higher recovery pattern. Here you can see in the, um, in the projects, uh, five different projects. On the other hand, on the right-hand side, is number of batches, which we have exceeded, no matter if it's a small or a large scale. We have received the same results. And when it comes to scalability, it was stable as it looks. For example, we started with 30 ml, 
to one liter, to two liter, to 10 liter. And these are the number of batches to um, optimize our process. And here at the bottom, we have compared it with two liters versus 10 liters. And here you can see the trend is almost similar when it comes to two liters and 10 liters, which is which will only get you when you are doing many experiments and you're optimizing. So let's see, for example, when it comes to 30 ml, 26 experiments were done. When it comes to one liter, 30 experiments were done. And then only we understand like this is very stable and we are getting good results. All right, um, here on the 50 liters, a case of a 50 liter batch in a single use bioreactor. And um, here with again two graphs and you can see the crude tire when it's 50 liter, two liter, 30 ml, um, two liter bioreactor and 30 ml shaker flask, which we have measured with P24 and the crude tire as well. I would like to brag about our 50 liters actually, the data says it all and we have achieved good results and proud to share it with everyone. We have actually successfully reached a higher crude tire in most of our most of our batches. Okay, um, here is a very, very important slide. I would like um, you to please pay attention here as well. Um, the downstream process, which is very, very um, challenging and a lot of things to consider. So um, all of these slides, which you can see the data for the downstream process. Just want to tell you guys that if you want to do each process study, what the CPPs are, the CQAs are, we should take um, the consideration first. For example, the nucleus treatment, the selection of filter, chromatography, the TFDF, and the trial filtration as well. And Actually, these kind of things will become the pillars of downstream processes. Ultrafiltration is the method of choice for concentration and difiltration. For these particles will remove low molecular weight impurities and reduce the handling volume. Um, for example, that um, if you are talking about TFDF, the, the molecular weight cutoff is between 100 to 500 kDa. The membrane cassette, which is from 300, 100 to 300 kDa. For example, the use of hollow fibers devices can result in lower shear rates when compared to the member cassettes devices, which is usually used in manufacturing of several viral particles. Um, when it comes to different um, chromatographies, we have gained more importance in the manufacturing. For example, like IEC, ion exchange chromatography, is one of the most widely used techniques for purification of large particles, which exploits indifference um, and its particularly different charges as well. And then um, the ion exchange chromatography technique can be applied depending on a net charge of the particle. For example, if it's LVV or AV or adenovirus and so on, a difference. The net charge, the pH will depend on the particular surface. Most of the viral particles have an isoelectric point below 7.4, negatively charged. Lentivirus is also um, an example of a viral vector that has been successfully purified using ion exchange chromatography. We have seen it in different companies and um, our company um, as well. The membrane filter is a key parameter in strial filtration. When it comes to strial filtration here, um, it's, it's actually the losses are mostly in the strial filtration. So here, um, the basic things which I have mentioned here is 
the, the temperature, when you are talking about nucleus treatment, the temperature, um, the pH, incubation time, final concentration of benzenase, um, the HCP removal rate, plasmid DNA removal rate, recovery rate. And when it comes to the filter, the pressure, you have to check what's the pressure when you are selecting a filter and what's the turbidity. And the most important thing is the, the area you're going to use because when you are using the small scale, you are using the small scale or you're using the large scale. And the recovery rate, the SCP removal as well when you are using different filters. So here we have seen uh, the trend when using different filters, the recovery rate on different steps. And um, now I wanna talk about the chromatography. When it comes to chromatography, the parameters which is important is the loading volume, like how much loading volume, how much buffer you're gonna load, what will be the flow rate, and what is the recovery rate and the removal of, of the impurities. And the TFDF, um, the most important thing about it, it's the pore size. You have to know the, what KDA you're gonna use for different viral vectors and what shear force you're going to use. Recovery rate and the removal of HCP and SCD. And then about the trial filtration is the same as uh, when it comes to selecting filters. You have to see the pressure, you have to set the flow rate and you have to check for the recovery rate because maybe you will be losing um, a lot of vector, a virus in the filter. So it's a very low recovery. Um, here, um, it's, there are a lot of batches we have done and the recovery, it's, it's here, the percentage we have, uh, when we have loaded the supernatant and the step one, two, um, step four and step five. So it's a good recovery when it comes to facts and it was measured by P24. And here, the HCP removal, the highest when, it, when we have loaded the supernatant and when it comes to the step five, it's within our target. And with the HCD as well, it's super high. And when it comes to our last step in our process, it comes to very low. Okay, lastly, um, I would like to talk about our um, GenScript track record, why and why should you choose us and how you can put the trust in our company. We have been collaborating with a lot of different reputed companies around the world. And our mission is very clear that we are very dedicated providing end-to-end -end services, very professional, and help our customers in any sort of ways. Here, I would like to also show our solid track record that we have six IND approvals from the local body and the FDA. Over 20 P and V CMC projects running and 30 clinical plasmid manufacturing batches as well. And over 10 clinical lentivirus vector batches are going on. And we have been collaborating with um, some of the best companies in China and around the world. For example, I want to talk about x -Life TCRT, which have submitted the IND, I mean, they got the approval in 2019 and they have started their clinical trials. The same thing with STEMI RNA, they got the approval in 2020 and they have started their clinical trials in April last year. And the final one, Abujin, the first batch was set up by the Chinese government in 2020 and they also have started in 
06-2020 for the clinical trials. And the other parts I would like to mention is like we have global clients all around. And in China, US, Canada, Korea, and Japan, we have different ways to talk to our clients. And we have received 100% satisfactory outcome. For example, 25 um, CMC client audits in China and 16 client audits from US, Canada, and Europe and Korea, 13 satisfactory and three are ongoing. And the IND filing track record is that with China, NMPA, which is the local body and FDA for plasmid and virus, we got approvals as well. And within US too, because our um, head office is in, um, in US and 20 ongoing plasmid and virus CMC projects. So the reason why we are sharing this is like if we, if you guys are choosing us, it's more like you're in the good hand and we have a professional dedicated team to cater your needs. Um, for example, if you guys have any um, any questions regarding our suspension process or anything, would be um, glad to help you and assist you. And that's all for for today's webinar. And if you guys have any questions, we would uh, be glad to to take. Yeah, Casey. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ali, for the wonderful presentation. So we'll move on to the Q&A session right now. The first question, uh, if we use suspension manufacturing, what's the license fee for using the Power S 293T cell mine? Okay, um, when it comes to the Power S, yeah, it's a good question because that's our in-house um, Power um, 293 cell. You are supposed to pay a license fee based on the payment milestones. For example, we have set like firstly at the IND approval, secondly at the clinical phase one, and lastly uh, when it's a BLA. With our license fees, it's quite low compared to um, with our other competitors in the market. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ali. So the next question, What's the advantages of Power S 293T compared to other companies? Hmm, yeah, um, the, the Power S, uh, as we have seen in the slide, that um, it gets a higher yield or at least similar to the commercially available cell lines. That's the first thing, you get a higher yield. And the concern about the license is that it covers IND, clinical, and commercial. And we have actually performed um, a lot of batches on our Power S, which has given a stable, um, uh, a stable fax results. And we have used it with different GOI and we have achieved a very high titer. So this is a best um, answer I can, I can give. And then the last thing I would also say that the license fee for our um, Power S293 cell is relatively low and you don't have to pay any uh, royalty or you don't have to pay any maintenance. So it's, a lot of advantages when it comes to anyone thinking about getting um, power 293T. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ali. So the next question, can we select cell line for manufacturing our LVV with suspension culture? Yes, you can uh, definitely select. There are a lot of different cell lines available in the market and we do have our own as well. 
But if you guys wish to have your own, we can establish the MCB, WCB for you. For you. We can send um, the detailed requirement uh, to you. Please leave your um, contact, your information, how we can reach your email. So we can definitely contact whoever, um, whoever is interested. But we do have our own cell line, as you guys know, um, or we can use um, different commercially available cell line as well. Thank you, Dr. Ali. So the yes. next question, What's the main difference between adherent and suspension process? Oh, yeah. Um, the adherent and the suspension, yes. Um, as I mentioned, like we do get a lot of these, uh, these things. What's the difference between two of these uh, systems? So adherent system, it's um, you have to use the serum, the bubine serum that is there. So in suspension, there is no BSA when you are using LVV production for the suspension. Um, and the passaging for the suspension process is much more easier when it compares to adherent. And um, again, for the larger scale, as I've mentioned, for the larger scale manufacturing, suspension cell line is highly recommended. Because with the adherent, it's very difficult to go on a higher scale. You need to have a lot of wells you need to have a lot of space and it's laborious. So um, it's, it's always, suspension is always the best choice. With, and again, with, with suspension, you get higher yield and in adherent, you get lower uh, yield in the, in the supernatant. And the satisfying T cell transduction rate is much higher higher in suspension when it compares to adherent. And I'm sure the, the suspension cell line can always be your first choice if you are trying to um, go for lentivirus production. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ali. The next question, can you illustrate a bit more about your general purification process? Um, a general purification process, um, so I understand basically um, the downstream part. Um, so what basically is there is like you start with the, um, the UFDF and you use halo fiber or you can use the cassette. But for lentivirus, it's usually, it's better if we go for um, um, halo fibers because you can actually control the shear force and it's much more idle for lentivirus. But if it's an AAV, you can go for mem um, member cassette, membrane cassette. And um, then you have to also understand like what kind of, um, what kind of, um, chromatography you guys will be using, what kind of resin you are using, how you design your experiment. You want to go for uh, size exclusion chromatography or you want to go for IEX or AEX. So this is very important. Um, most of the people are using IEX now and we use IEX and size exclusion chromatography when it comes to our, um, our process. And then the filtration, the clarification, it's a little difficult, actually. It just looks like you are filtering, but you need to know what kind of filter you are going to use, what kind of material you're going to use, and how much is the recovery. You need to understand a little bit about the filters as well. The most important, I would say it here, is like you even have to understand what charge does the filter carry. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Dr. Ali. So the next mm -hmm. question, what is the percentage difference of transduction efficiency in CAR T cells between crude before and after at the end of the downstream process treatment? I mean, when it comes to the to the thing, I mean, again, it's, it's the same thing. Like, see, it, it, people have to, um, you know, see the difference between the adherent system and the um, and the suspension system. So when it comes to the adherent system, the, the, the transduction C is, is much lower. So it's always recommended that you use um, suspension to get a higher ratio. Okay, 
Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, Ali. So the next question, do you have in-house data to compare several suspension to 93T in the market in terms of virus title? Um, uh, yes, we definitely do have, um, as in the slide I have mentioned, that we have done um, almost over uh, 30 experiments on a small scale to large scale. So it's been constant. It's been constant and it's, it's stable. So it can definitely be, be shared. Please get in touch with us and we can definitely uh, be glad to, to share the data with, with it, which when we compare to, to facts, yeah. Thanks, Dr. Ali. The next question, mm -hmm. what, what is the most difficult process to get high yield of purification? Compared with AAD DSP, why does lentiviral purification process shows the low recovery? Um, when it comes to, um, to adherent, right? Like, I mean, the question is why there's low recovery in adherent, isn't it? Low recovery for lentivirus purification doesn't really in in suspension uh, or in adherent uh, doesn't really stay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think this question needs to have like it should be suspension or adherent. But I mean, it comes to when it comes to low low recovery. I think most of the recoveries are lost during the purification process, which again it have to be optimized. We have to use different. Um, uh, different experiments to design and to see where and which recovery and which filters we are going to use and uh, what are the recovery um, recoveries for that. For example, you get higher recoveries when you're using cellulose filter. When it comes to PPE, then you might get a lower recovery. So you have to optimize depending on your project. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ali. Maybe we'll take the last question before we wrap up the whole session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the last question will be, uh, you mentioned that suspension process has a higher whole cell protein impurities compared to with adherent process. Is this downstream mm -hmm. pro purification process is more tedious? Um, yeah, very good question. Yes, so when it comes to suspension, this is a biggest challenge or most of the industries are facing the removal of impurities, the HCP and HCD. So of course, it, it, it makes a lot of pressure for the downstream team to, to purify and to control the turbidity. Um, so I think if you choose the right material, the right resin, when you are dealing with the chromatography, I'm sure this can actually solve um, a lot of um, issues when it comes to uh, which when it comes to impurities. Uh, again, it, it needs to be optimized. It needs to be it needs to be checked where and how it can be helped, and especially uh, the nucleus treatment will help you to optimize as well. Like some of the projects we have done it like after the harvest and some of the projects you do it in the middle of the process. So you just have to optimize and, and see it's a, it's yes, it's a still very challenging, um, challenging problem when it comes to uh, the impurities, which is HCP and HCD. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ali. So mm -hmm. due to time constraint, we'll just end the Q&A session here. We still have a lot of questions that we didn't get to answer. So I will mm -hmm. email back all the answers from Dr. Ali to you. So thank you once again, Dr. Ali, for the great presentation. And also to all of you who joined us today. I hope you find this okay. session useful and beneficial for your work. Okay. So thanks, right. everyone, for okay. joining us again. And have a nice day. Yeah. All right. Thanks, thank everyone. you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.